Hey fam, welcome to my old school RuneScape League for forward slash Iron Man guide to useful shops for fast gear upgrades. This video assumes you know the levels of gear progression from level 0 to 99. But first, Adventurer John is a seasoned adventurer found outside the Sheared Ram pub in Lumbridge. He tells players about the adventure parts task system and is the person players go to to claim the combat part starter kit and combat part vouchers. Players can only see him by being eligible for adventure parts, which requires telling the Guyliner guide at the very beginning of Tutorial Island that they are either a new player or are a player that has played in the past, but not recently. In addition, Iron Man cannot see him. So starting with range weapons. Lowe's Archery Emporium located east of the Varrocks Water Fountain which sells bronze to adamant arrows, bronze bolts, shortbow to maple longbow, and crossbow from range levels 0 to 30. Nard Dog's Bone Weapon sells Dorchun weapons and bone bolts for range level 28. The shop is located in Dorchkan Mine and is only accessible after completing the Lost Tribe quest. Holloway's Crossbow Shop is a shop run by Holloway underneath White Wolf Mountain. It sells crossbow components up to Mithril limbs and maple stock at fletching level 54 to make Mithril crossbow up to range level 36 and has the same stock and prices as the Dwarfen Mine Crossbow Shop. Dark Ord its bow and arrows is a shop in Condoring where Dargord the bow and arrow salesman sells arrow shafts, arrows and arrowheads up to Runite, as well as short bows. He will also buy brutal arrows up to Runite. His shop is located in the Ranging Guild. Rune arrows can only be used for you and stronger bows, from range levels 40 and up. Shan's Ranged Weaponry is an archery shop run by Shan on the east side of Priftinus. Shan sells you bows for range level 40 which can be obtained from medium reward casket or at 65 fletching with U-Log and bowstring. Authentic Throwing Weapons is a shop where the tribal weapon salesman sells javelins and throwing axes up to Runite. The shop is located in the Ranging Guild, so it can only be accessed by players with a ranged level of 40 or higher. Authentic Throwing Weapon sells bronze to rune javelins and thrown axes from range level 65 for light ballister. The Rune Crossbow from Crazy Archaeologist at 61 range. Broad Bolts from Broader Fletching. Broad Bolts require 55 Slayer and 61 range to equip. They can be fired only by a Rune Crossbow, Dragon Hunter Crossbow, Dragon Crossbow, Armadil Crossbow, or Zed Crossbow. Range Armor. Horvix Armor Shop, north of Lowe's, sells melee armors and studded armors from defense levels 0 to 20. Reldak is a cave goblin, center of Dorjkan city cells for up leather armors for range and defense levels 25. Requires completion of death to the Dorjkan quest. Scavo's rune store, second floor of the Champions Guild, south of Varok sells rune armors, rune longsword, mace and sword, green dyed armor and koi from defense, range and attack levels 40. Requires completion of 32 quest points. Aver is a scientist, residing in the secret room of Drainer Manor, at the southwest part behind the hidden door next to the bookcase. Aver sells feathers, iron and steel arrows and arrow teeps, Aver's devices from range levels 30 to 70. Requiring Animal Magnetism Quest. Snakeskin armors require craft levels 35 to 56 from range and defense levels 30. Commander Connard is a barbarian located on the main floor of the barbarian outpost. He runs the Barbarian Assault Reward Shop for the Barbarian Assault minigame, players who have earned honor points while playing the minigame can talk to him to access the reward shop. Commander Connard sells Fighter, Ranger, Healer and Runner hats, Fighter Torso, Pennant Skirt and Gloves, Runner Boots and Granite Body, from Defense Levels 40 to 50, Range Levels 60 and Strength Level 50. Blessed Dehyde from Hard Clues. Magic Weapons Forward Slash Runes. Orberry's Rune Shop is a shop located in southeastern Varrock and owned by Orberry. It is a small building just south of the eastern Varrock Bank. The shop's easy to access location makes it one of the most convenient ways for players to buy runes and to teleport to the Rune Essence Mine after the quest Rune Mysteries. Orberry sells Mind, Chaos, and Death Runes. Magic Guild store located on the second floor US of the Wizards Guild in Yanil. One must have a magic level of 66 to enter the guild. The store is owned by the Wizard of Cother. The store sells chaos, death, blood, nature, lore and soul runes. Due to the high amount sold by this store, restocking takes a long time. Completion of the Hand in the Sand quest is required to access this store. Ali's Discount Wares is a shop owned by the swindler Ali Moraisane. 
It sells similar items as a general store, as well as desert survival gear. After completion of Rogue Trader, other items can be bought from the store. Ali sells cosmic, mind, chaos, death, blood, nature, lore and soul runes. Regathers Wares is a general store run by Regath located in Asuas. Regathers sells vial of water, rope, mind, blood and soul runes, wizard hat and eye of newt. Iblis is a Zarosian mystic who plays a large role in the Desert Treasure I quest. During the quest, the player helps Iblis free the Majorat Azanadra from his prison in the Ancient Pyramid, to do this, the four diamonds of Azanadra must be collected, and to this end Iblis, with the player's help, enchants a number of mirrors to discern the diamonds' locations. Iblis can be found just southeast of the Bandit Camp, at the Mystical Mirrors after Desert Treasure I is completed. If Desert Treasure I is not completed, he can be found in the Eastern Building in the Bandit Camp. If you bring Iblis an ancient icon along with an ancient staff, he will combine the two together, upgrading the staff to the ancient scepter. Iblis sells the ancient staff for 80k GP, for attack and magic levels 50. Magic Armor Magic Amy from Easy Carsket or 7 magic level 1 enchant and Sapphire Amy, you, from Sapphire, Gold Bar and 24 crafting. Sapphire from small chest are found inside HAM storerooms during and after the death to the Dorchuan quest. And baby impling with 17 hunter. Zerican armor from Lizardman. 12 fabrics and level 22 in crafting are required to craft a full set, in addition to a needle and thread. In order to equip Zerishan robes, players require a magic level of 20 and a defense level of 10. A Brudu shield is a special members only shield requiring 25 defense and 25 magic to equip. It is created by using a hammer on a tribal mask with two snake skins and eight nails of any type, requiring 35 crafting and yielding 100 crafting experience. A mask of a particular color produces a shield of the same color. The animation when the passive effect occurs. Brutish shields have a unique passive effect in combat, similar to the black mask, when damage is taken, there is a 10% chance of using a charge to drain 1 plus 5% levels of a shield specific combat stat. From the opponent. The enemy must have at least 50% hit points, and the skill must not already be drained. This occurs even when not retaliating, and at any distance. Each brudu starts with 10 charges, and a charge is used for each activation of the passive effect. Brudu shields cannot be recharged. Having zero charges does not alter the item's stats. There are three types of Brudu shields. The blue Brudu shield lowers the opponent's attack level. The orange Brudu shield lowers the opponent's strength level. The green Brudu shield lowers the opponent's defense level. The Wizard's Guild sells Mystic Armor for a total of 235 KGP and runes. It is located in Yanil and requires level 66 magic to enter. Boosts, such as a wizard's mind bomb at level 63, can be used to enter. Entering the wizard's guild is a requirement for the hard Ardugan diary. Mystic robe bottom drops from Turoth and mystic robe top from Kurask. All mystic robe tops require 40 magic and 20 defense to wear. Split bark armor is a set of members only magic armor that requires 40 magic and 40 defense to wear. Each piece of split bark armor can be made by Wizard Jalarast at the Wizard's Tower if players pay a fee and bring her the raw materials, fine cloth, and bark. Skeletal armor has very similar stats, yet split bark armor is better by a few points. Alternatively, players can craft split bark armor themselves by using a needle and thread with the appropriate quantities of fine cloth and bark. This requires 60 to 62 crafting. Swamp Bark Armor is a set of members only magic armor that requires 50 magic and 50 defense to wear. Each piece of Swamp Bark Armor can be made by using the corresponding piece of Split Bark Armor on the Nature Altar, and costs a certain amount of Nature Runes. Infusing Split Bark Armor into Swamp Bark Armor requires sufficient runecraft skill, as well as having learned how to do so via reading the rune scroll of Swamp Bark. The Gauntlets and Boots require 100 Nature Runes and 42 runecraft. The helm requires 250 nature runes and 46 runey craft. The body and legs require 500 nature runes and 48 runey craft. Thus crafting a full swamp bark armor set requires 1450 nature runes. The melee defense is comparable to mythal armor, and the total magic bonus is 6 greater than that of split bark armor. 
In addition to their stats, the helm, body, and legs increases the duration of bind spells by 2 ticks, 1.2 seconds, with the full set increasing the duration by 6 ticks. Bloodbark armor is a set of members only magic armor that requires 60 magic and 60 defense to wear. Each piece of bloodbark armor can be made by using the corresponding piece of split bark. Armor on either the True Blood Altar or Curran's Blood Altar, and costs a certain amount of blood runes. Infusing split bark armor into blood bark armor requires sufficient rune craft skill, as well as having learned how to do so via reading the rune scroll of blood bark. The gauntlets and boots require 100 blood runes each and 77 rune craft. The helm requires 250 blood runes and 79 rune craft. The body and legs require 500 blood runes each, 1000 runes total, and 81 rune craft. Thus, crafting a full blood bark armor set requires 1450 blood runes. The melee defense is comparable to adamant armor, and slightly better than that of RM's robes, and the total magic bonus is 5 greater than that of mystic robes. In addition to their stats, each piece of armor increases the amount that blood spells heal by 2% of the damage dealt. When the full set of armor is equipped, blood spells will heal the caster's hit points by 35% of the amount of damage inflicted. A. When worn alongside the Ancient Scepter, this increases to 38.5% of the amount of damage inflicted. Lunar equipment is the ceremonial attire of the Moon Clan, is made by players during the Lunar Diplomacy quest, and may be kept afterwards. All armor and jewelry pieces of the set require 65 magic and 40 defense to wear, and the staff requires 65 magic to wield. After completion of the quest, the pieces of lunar equipment may be bought from the Wunny Romancer on Lunar Isle. Players may not make the items themselves after the quest is complete, they must buy the items if they lose them. While lunar armor has lesser magic bonuses compared to other magical armor of a similar level, it is marginally more defensive compared to other magic armors that usually have few to no melee defenses. Because of this, it can be considered a crude hybrid between melee armor and magic armor. However, ranged attacks may still cripple the wearer due to the armor's virtually non-existent ranged defense. Melee Weapons Varok Sword Shop is a shop in southern Varok run by a shopkeeper. The shop can be found opposite the Blue Moon Inn. The shop sells daggers, swords, and longswords, all of which range from bronze to adamant. Rune Simi can be obtained from Fire Giant. Rune Longsword from Upper, Brea Fighter, and Bort in Champions Guild. Rune Armor from Champ Guild Sararin's or and Gem Store is a gem stall and shop counter, or are located within the inner city of Mor Ulrek. It is located east of Sarhazal's equipment store in the southeast section of the city. The store is run by Sarharin. The store sells gems and ores for varying amounts of tuckle. Sarharin sells runite or for 4.8k tuckles. Sarhazal's equipment store is located in Mor Ulrek. It is located just south of the entrance to Inferno. The store is run by Sar Hazal. The store sells obsidian equipment and obsidian armor for varying amounts of tuckle. A fire cape is required to access the inner part of the city where this store is located. If Karamjir gloves one or better are equipped while trading with this shop, the prices of all items is reduced by around 13.3%. Armjur gloves one or better are equipped while selling items to this shop, item value increases by roughly 2.3x the normal buy amount. For example, obsidian capes can be sold to the store normally for 9,000 tuckle each. However, if the gloves are equipped they can be sold for 21,000 tuckle each. The Toxkitzil, obsidian shield, is another good example, being normally sold for 6,750 each. When gloves are worn, shields can be sold for 15,750 each. The obsidian mace is not dropped by any TZR monster and can only be obtained from the store. Dagger's Scimitar Smithy is a scimitar stall and the only store in old school runescape to sell the dragon scimitar for the price of 100,000 coins. It is found on Ape Atoll and is near the rune stall. The shop is owned by the monkey trader, Dagger. As with all of the facilities on Marim, players need to use a Greek to use this store, as Marim shops only deal with monkeys. If the player has not yet completed Monkey Madness I, there will be zero stock of Dragon Scimitars. However, once Monkey Madness I is completed Dragon Scimitars restock every 5 minutes. It is no longer necessary to complete Dayro's training in order to purchase or wield Dragon Scimitars. 
Ducat is a store run by Ducat in Zainaris that sells dragon longswords and dragon daggers. The shop can only be accessed after completion of the Lost City quest, which also gives the player the ability to wield both dragon items. The shop can only be accessed via the Diamond Gate, requiring one cut diamond to pass. This shop is decorated with a fairy market stall. Melee Armor Horvik's Armor Shop, north of Lowe's, sells melee armors and studded armors from defense levels 0 to 20. Valen's Shop of Champions, besides Scavos, sells blue cape, adamant plate body, black full helm, and plate legs from defense levels 10 and 30. Scavos Rune Store, second floor of the Champions Guild, south of Varrock sells rune armors, rune longsword, mace and sword, green dyed armor and koi from defense, range and attack levels 40. Requires completion of 32 quest points. Commander Connard sells fighter, ranger, healer and runner hats, fighter torso, pennant skirt and gloves, runner boots and granite body, from defense levels 40 to 50, range levels 60 and strength level 50. Sarhazel sells obsidian equipment and obsidian armor. Jewelries. Power Amy can be obtained from Crazy Archaeologist or Magpie Impaling at 65 Hunter or with 57 Magic and level 4 Enchant. Diamond Amy, gems and jewelries from small chests found inside HAM storerooms during and after the death to the Dorchuan quest. Diamond Amy, you from 70 crafting, mining gem rocks and ores. Glory Amy from Dragon Impaling, 83 Hunter or Dragonstone Amy with level 5 Enchant and 68 Magic. Dragonstone Amy from Dragon and Crystal Impaling or 80 Crafting with Dragonstone and Gold Bar. Dragonstone from Dark Chest 28 Thieving, Basement of the Crumbling Tower on the Isle of Souls. It can be opened with a dark key obtained by looting the chest in the Isle of Souls dungeon. Doing so requires level 28 Thieving, and the chances to pick the lock can be increased by having a lockpick. The key is used to open dark chests, which can be found in the basement of the Crumbling Tower, on the north side of the Isle of Souls. Uncut Dragonstone from Crystal Chest can be found in the house directly south of the Witch's House in Tavali. The chest is locked and can only be opened using a crystal key, which is made by combining a loop half of key and a tooth half of key. Uncut Onyx from Sarhalex or and Gem Store is located in the outer city of Mor Ulrek. It is located west of Sar Hotel's Equipment Store and north of Sar Metrower's Rune Store. The store is run by Sar Halek. The store sells gems and ores for varying amounts of tuckle. Notably, this shop is one of the few ways of obtaining an uncut onyx, others being killing Zulrer and Scott Izzo. If Karimjur gloves one or better are equipped while trading with this shop, the prices of all items are reduced. For example, while it normally costs 300,000 tuckle for an uncut onyx, wearing the gloves reduces this to 260,000. Additionally, this also causes the shop to pay more tuckle for items sold to it. Onyx from Uncut Onyx with 67 crafting, Onyx Bracelet with 84 crafting, Onyx Amy, U with 90 crafting. Fury Amy from Onyx Amy and Region Bracelet from Onyx Bracelet with 87 magic and level 6 enchant. Lastly for neutral equipment. Void Knight equipment can be purchased from the Void Knights with Void Knight commendation points earned through the Pest Control minigame. To buy the items, a player must have 42 attack, strength, defense, hit points, ranged, and magic, along with 22 prayer. Void Knight armor contributes defense bonuses to all stats equally, including magic and ranged, without lowering any attack bonuses. The set bonus, see below, makes the armor a popular choice for all forms of attack, melee, ranged, and magic. A full set of Void Knight armor without the mace costs 850 points. Fire Cape from TZR Fight Cave. Barrows Gloves from Recipe for Disaster. Alright that's all. Goo goo googer folks. Hope you enjoy this video and it helps you in your Iron Man or League for Journey. Emmer go now. Please like and subscribe for more. Which three regions will you be unlocking for League? Comment below. I'm going Kondoran, Asgarnier and Z with last minute change. Thanks and take care now.